Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jay Zawoski. Mario Terbasi and I are in matching CHGO Bulls t-shirts. It was, yeah, it was bound to happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised uh, Joe didn't get the email today of yeah. uh, CHGO shirt, black shorts. Yeah. Uh, what, it's it just got to be different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joe Brand is here. Uh Blackhawks pre- and post-game host from WGN, the voice of the Kane County Cougars, and the pride of Marist High School on the <laughs> south side. Uh, slow news day. We are looking forward to our <laughs> Reese Johnson uh, player evaluation show. Uh, what? No, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Eddie Olchek, no longer with the Blackhawks. But before we get to that, we wanted to welcome Joe to the show and say thank you for coming in, despite it being a very awkward news day for everybody. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> pleased to be here at the moment you... Uh, you mentioned that there might be a spot for me to fill in for the Greg, the great Greg. I uh, felt like I had to pounce on it. I'm sorry for not wearing my Roosevelt shirt. I yeah. do have one, and I, I left it in the closet. It's a baseball themed shirt, though. So then I would have been throwing it all off whack with your with your yeah. bullshit. Well, our basketball themed shirts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throwing everybody off. I mean, Greg Greg's collection is is pretty eclectic. Oh so, yeah. Uh, yeah, nothing nothing throws us off. At Does this he point. have the Sandlot one? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Here's then, the question. Yeah, I think anything has, if I would have. He has the Does entire he collection. have the blank one? The answer is yes. He does. <laughs> yes. Yes. He. Because yes. I, I thought about like, oh, that's a cool one. Maybe I'll get it. For Greg's birthday, of course he's got it already. Yep. Yep. He's, he's going to have it already. You just got to give him a gift card then. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. That's the way. To, and I saw pictures from his vacation in Georgia, uh, and he has the Empire Strikes Back shirt on and matching shorts. It that's is the only way just, to do it. He's committed to it, man. It is a it, lifestyle. Wait, and is that on Twitter? I think it's Facebook. I think it's uh, his girlfriend's Facebook. I could I'll send it to you. Is Roosevelt's buying spots here? Because I feel they like should they should. You, you would think. They but get, why would they? They're true. like, no, he's, he's paying for it. <laughs> already all. getting free advertisements. Yeah, why yeah. getting free advertisements? All right, let's get to it. Um, Eddie Olchek no longer with the Blackhawks. And I think the three of us have had a pretty hectic uh, last 23 hours. The news broke right yeah, when we wrapped up the show yesterday. 20, yeah, 20, 22 and a half hours because we, uh, we, we stuck around for a little bit after yesterday's show to uh, address what basically came out five minutes after we said, all right, that's enough for today. And um, yeah, uh, uh, in, in the news cycle as it is, um, a lot more has been come out a little bit a lot more is a little bit uh, understood a lot is still not understood about this whole story um very hard to <laughs> dissect it in a way that doesn't uh doesn't make you just frustrated because it really just seems like you, it really just doesn't seem like Eddie Olchek wanted to make this decision whatsoever. As much as he wants to, as much as he says, this was my decision. I made the decision, all this, all these things. Um, it really, to me, in my personal opinion, it does not feel like this was something he actually wanted to do, but it came to this point, unfortunately. Yeah. Listening to his interview with Waddle and Sylvie yesterday was very tough. That was a tough 30 you know, minutes. Eddie's a guy who <laughs> we're not close, but we're friendly uh, he's always sort of been there when I've had a question about something strategy-wise or what's going on with the team-wise sort of thing. Uh, always quick to respond, and uh, it's tough to hear a guy like that who does wear his heart on his sleeve. Eddie's an emotional guy. Mm-hmm. He always has been. Um, but it is abundantly clear that he was not looking to leave the Blackhawks by any means. And And for me as a fan, I feel like Eddie walks into the United Center yesterday you find a way to not let him leave, right? We're sorry it's come to this. We far, I'm sorry you feel disrespected or wh- whatever the situation might be. And say, let's please, let's sit down and find a way to get this done. We need you. We want you. You are going to be the, the voice of our rebuild. You are the, our biggest cheerleader. You're our biggest critic, but in a fair way, if anyone's going to be able to spin this and sell this to Hawks fans, it's you, Eddie Olchek. Please, 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 let's find a way to get it done And I know it's never that simple, and I know for a fact it wasn't that simple, and we're going to get to it in a little bit here, but it's just, as a fan, it's frustrating, and I know it feels like death by a thousand cuts, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's it's the Kyle Beach thing, and it's the Debrinka trade, and it's Pat Foley leaving, and it's all these little things that are unrelated to each other. Right. They're, they're not related in any way, shape or form. But as a fan, it's like, how many punches to the gut can I take? And I think that's why we're seeing so many Hawks fans frustrated. 
listen, there's no way around it. Yesterday was a heavy day yeah. for, for multiple people and in multiple aspects. And you're right, Eddie went on the air yesterday on ESPN and was emotional, and that's Eddie Olchek. Yep. And listen, just this past year doing this gig, getting to know Eddie as, as kind of more of a person. Like, I, I grew up here. I grew up watching Pat and Eddie, and, you know, he never made you feel dumb. He always taught you the game. It's a yes. big reason why I, I fell in love with hockey. Um, there's, there is a lot of reason for him to continue – to be a part of the Hawks, especially in a rebuild, not even so much for spinning it, but for, for letting fans know what to be happy about and what not to be happy what about. What to watch. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and he, he deserves that credibility because of his prestige. And I just I don't think the Blackhawks are undermining the significance of this loss, though. I don't think there's, Eddie's gone, we're good, we're, we're going to figure this out. They're very detailed and thorough with what they're doing moving forward. And I'm not even saying fans shouldn't be upset about it. Fans are going to be upset about this. I mean, this right. this is a dad, an uncle, uh, a friend, a cousin that they feel like they've they've had on the air for so many years. But I, I don't think the Hawks are taking this lightly either. I, I think this is this is no. they understand this is a loss. This is a big loss, and they're not going to take it lightly. I don't think they're going to bring in one person. This is the replacement for Eddie Olchek because you just can't do that. I think there's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be a lot of rotation, but it's not going to be like the Pat Foley situation where we are finding our next Eddie Olchek right here and now. It's more of let's take it one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Let's see who we're comfortable with, who we like, and who can relate to our fans and move on from there. Let's face it, this is, this is a whole different look with the organization on the ice and off. Right. This is kind of just as significant. Some people think more, some people think less of losing Alex Dabrinkit and, and Brandon <laughs> yeah. Hagel. Yeah. But this is just as significant. The only thing that's going to tell whether or not this was – the best case scenario for the Hawks moving forward is is waiting a couple of years, just like the players, just like the draft mm-hmm. picks. And I get it. It's a hard loss. I'm not sugarcoating that. I think fans understand that. But I, I do think the Blackhawks understand that too. Yeah, and I, I feel like the the fan base uh, is is reasonably upset. And, and, and I, I wrote about it uh, last night. It's up today now on, on allchgo.com talking about Kind of the complicated nature of this situation with uh, with with Olchek leaving and just kind of the the ripple effect that that'll have, especially right now going into this season where so many things are changing and so many things were looking bleak. Losing Olchek as that 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 voice, uh, the, the team ambassador and and the person that he is within the within the realm of the Blackhawks, um, that's tough for fans and and I. I feel frustrated as a fan that that he won't be part of the broadcast anymore. I feel frustrated in the way that it it ended um, because it just didn't it didn't seem like it needed to to end in this fashion. And we understand like yes, this is this is a business. We talk about it with with players and and contracts and things like that. Like it's a business business decision. All these all these terms. Um, but I just feel like the Blackhawks right now are in a position where. They need to be smart about business, and I just, I just feel like, like you said, Jay, like letting him leave without having something worked out. If there's a person that you just say, you know, we we will make anything work to keep you around, I think it's 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 Eddie Olchek, especially now, yep. especially for this team, and especially where they're at. They need the fan base to be bought into what's happening, and I feel like without Pat Foley the best voice that you have to help the fan base buy into it was Eddie Olchek. I think even with Pat Foley, Eddie Olchek is still the best voice because you could hear in games Foley's frustration. Yeah. And he's, you know, Danny Glover getting too old for this shit. (laughs) You know, he just doesn't want to watch crappy hockey, and I get that. Eddie was your guy. Mm -hmm. Eddie was the guy to sell it. I want to – I do want to caution fans from this, and I know that, like – I don't want to come off as a, I'm carrying water for the Blackhawks, but a lot of people are saying this is a slap in the face from the organization. It's the final straw. This, for better or worse, caught them off guard. And it is their job, let me say this very clearly, it is their job to not be caught off guard and not let something like this happen. The Hawks, as we've known them for years, have had a tight ship everywhere. 
at least it appeared that way, wow. right? Yeah. They control the message media, all those sort of things. You can't let this happen. You cannot just let Eddie Olchek come in and just shock you. Oh, my God, you're leaving? I don't believe that. I don't believe that it was a shock. I just don't. I think they, the fact that they're saying, like, this is, he came in yesterday and we thought, I don't buy that. I think they knew that this was a possibility. And that's why I said when he came in yesterday saying, I'm leaving, they should have made it happen. But at the same time, this is not on par with the Kyle Beach thing. This is not on par with a, a chosen neglect of duty or, or anything like that. I think that they wanted him back. And I don't know. It's, it's really a difficult thing to talk about because you've got a million people in our ears over the last 24 hours, all of which have their agenda. And you have to t- try to take these pieces and build the puzzle of what is the reality, who's, who's telling you the truth, who's lying, what part of this truth is true, what part of this truth is false. It's very, very complicated. And you have to do the best you can to kind of sift through all that information and come up with the best version of reality you can get. And I think that it, this is a failure on the Blackhawks' part, no doubt about it. But I do think that they have, I don't know, I guess they, ha- they have the right to say the things you're asking for are not doable for us. And Eddie many times yesterday said, it's not about term, it's not about money, it's about other things. And those other things are very vague, mm-hmm. right? And you wonder what those things might be. I don't know what they are, right? But could it have been, you know, pay me for all 82 games, maybe? Could it have been find a job for Nick, a full-time job for Nick? Maybe. It could have been that, right? There's a lot of things we don't know, and the Hawks have the right to say, well, wait, you don't do 82 games for us. We're going to pay you per game. You're still going to be the highest-paid broadcaster in the NHL when all is said and done, okay? Or, no, like, we can't just give Nick a job. We've got Troy Murray's there, and John Weidemann's there, and Colby Cohen's there, and we've got our crew is hired, and they're there. We can't just create a position out of whole cloth. Mm -hmm. Whatever it might be, that is closer to the reality of what happened than Eddie Olchek storming in and saying, I quit, and the Hawks saying, good, screw you, you're gone. We're not going to pay you. There's so much nuance to it. Right. There's so much nuance to it. So before, and this is kind of what I was trying to say on Twitter yesterday before I had all this information like (laughs) it's never as simple as the Hawks are slapping us as a fan base in the face it's just not the reality I do think at the end of the day the Hawks should have found a way to get this done I'm pissed they didn't and everyone now is worse off because of the situation they're in because it puts Chris Vosters in a bad spot because who's going to put Chris Vosters over more than Eddie Olchek nobody right right? Uh, it puts everybody on the broadcast in a bad spot. And now you've got this rebuild on TV of a team that's not going to be competitive. And you don't have the guy saying, like you said, you know, okay, this is what you're looking for. Don't worry about the wins and losses, but look at the way Lucas Reichel handled the shift. That's a positive sign. That guy's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. And it crushes the organization. That was the most uh, trusted and best voice the organization had. And it's gone and it should not have happened. It's, Sorry for ranting. <laughs> oh. It's it's uh, it's part of growing up too, right? Like you have to deal with adult breakups when you get older. I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah. 31 now, and now I'm having friends that you know are in relationships and they break up. Mm-hmm. And it's not like high school where, ah, he's my buddy. You know, you were never good to him. Right, you know, right. it's it's easy to jump onto one side. Like Jay's saying, there can be multiple truths, and there can be multiple truths on both sides. And I think the biggest thing is. In everyone's perfect world, the Blackhawks, Eddie Olchek, and the fans, Eddie Olchek continues to be on Hawks games, Mm -hmm. and that didn't happen. And the fact that it got to even the possibility of him not being here next year means that both sides were anticipating the idea of that possibility. Mm -hmm. So that had been a thought at least a thought, at the very least. Just like there is the thought of Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves being traded. And again, I I just go back to this is a new regime that is looking towards the future, however that entails. I do want to kind of go back. For what I said, you know, we won't know if this is the right move. Listen, losing Eddie Olchek 
is going to suck. Yeah. It's going to suck, and there's no way around that. It's a huge role to try and f- fill that I don't know who you bring in to immediately do right, that. Right, but, but, so, so, but changes happen, right? Yes. For better or for worse, they happen. And, uh, again, I, I don't think it's going to be one person plucked in and you are the new Eddie Olchek. I think that'd be unfair mm-hmm. to the person and to the fans because you're, you're starting off uh, – you got a really late start then with everyone <clears throat> going to their um, allegiance to Eddie. So I think there's going to be more rotation. I, I imagine so. I think that'd be fair to the fans, it'd be fair to the people, and it'd be fair to uh, to the Blackhawks broadcast overall. The only new Eddie Olchek would have been Nick Olchek because right. they're so similar. <laughs> but it, it um, was like a movie on radio. He, I sometimes I'm like, which one is it? Yeah, <laughs> it was like a movie when he came in. Like it was almost like. Like if they remade or did a prequel to Goodfellas and like you had uh, a young Joe Pesci that was Joe Pesci's kid and, and you just yeah. all the nuances, all the lines. Uh, working with Nick was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was really, really cool. And in a way, sarcastically and not sarcastically, he was like a Chicago prince, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I kind of treated <laughs> yeah, him like that. Yeah. And I know like, you he know, dressed like one, too. He did. He did. It's yeah. Like no one villain. <laughs> but that's what I mean. You know, give him a little bit of a hard time with stuff like that. He's a down to earth dude, too. It, it was really cool getting. And, uh, getting to know him, and I don't know what's in his future. It seems like the speculation is out there that that that's not a uh, possibility with him with the Hawks. I don't know, mm-hmm. um, but man, that kid's got a bright future. The coolest thing about Nick is he went through and is still going through those minor league dues that you hear so much about this business. I mean, yeah. I've been in Kane County for nine years, right? I I, I do that because I want to do play by play in sports. That is my opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. That's what Nick was doing with right. Chicago Steel, or I'm sorry, with uh, the Indy uh, Fuel. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was interning for NBC Sports Chicago. He was interning for TNT. He was the guy moving the first down marker on college football games. Like, so you, you know that that's him trying to get into the business and learn it the right way. And mm-hmm. I also think that that's Eddie being like, hey, can you give my son an opportunity? Don't throw him on air. Don't, mm-hmm. don't. Like, Make sure he knows what to do. Make sure he pays his dues. Make him earn it, right. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, unsolicited advice, but anyone that wants to get into this business, that is so (laughs) valuable to do the the behind-the-scenes stuff because you you have no idea how much it's going to help you down the road. And just to, to understand the lingo and to be, it makes you more valuable. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know, kind of going off topic, but that that, that was huge. That was huge. Well, I think it's important to point out that, that Nick is not just Eddie's son. Right. And they just handed him a job. Right. Nick, Nick is a professional broadcaster Mm -hmm. and he's had eyes on that forever and he's really effing good at it Mm -hmm. and i just want to say too we've got a bunch of people in the chat and watching it we appreciate that please hit that like button smash it as the kids say that's super super helpful for us and there's so many comments coming in fast and furious it's almost impossible to keep up with i just want to say like i've seen a couple people uh including mclovin say the word low ball i think that that is a misrepresentation of what happened again even eddie said it's not about money it's not about term. That's not what it was about. Now, as we sort of, okay, what does Eddie mean by that? And we kind of dissect that. A couple things you can look at. Lazarus reported last night that a team source said he was offered a five-year deal. I'm told that no part of that five-year deal was guaranteed. Okay, so I don't know the specifics of that, but it wasn't five years guaranteed. Here you go, Eddie. Here's five years. There was nuance to it. Keep in mind, in two years... The broadcast deal with NBC Sports Chicago is up, so it's very likely the Hawks will be looking for or creating their own broadcast situation, Mm -hmm. okay? So that could have played a role. And if they have to go and start their own network, do they have the money to pay Eddie Olchek what they pay him now? Probably not. As we look at the way Marquis has worked out for the Cubs, Crane Kenny says, wheelbarrows full of cash coming. It, that's not been the reality. You, you watch a Cubs game, and it looks like you're watching late-night television with the ads that are on there. It's like infomercials, and they're just not raking in the money like they mm-hmm. thought they would. Mm-hmm. So, there's a, again, like with this whole thing, there's a lot of nuance. But I don't think Eddie said, pay me more or I'm leaving. It right. was definitely not that simple. Yeah, I, I think the the term nuance is, is definitely... Um, necessary in this in this situation I know uh, yesterday after the news broke we, well, while we were discussing it um, kind of comparing the the situation to what Len Casper went through and right. and I, I think there I think there is a lot of you know just I think there's there's just a lot of details that may or may not ever come out um, 
when when Eddie did speak yesterday to ESPN 1000, he he said many different times and as part of his character, he wasn't going to go into any details. He very much wore the decision on his shoulders, um, whether that's 100 percent actually on his shoulders or not. I, I tend to not believe that to be the case. But, yeah, I, I, I think there's there's so much that can go into a situation like this. Um, I'm I'm. You know, speaking from 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 my experience, uh, there have been times where I've had to kind of, you know, gauge gauge different directions that I've wanted to go in in, in my career. Jay, I know you had <laughs> had what? that experience as well. Um, <laughs> so is yeah, it's just it, it's it's definitely not um, a black and white situation, and it's 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 going to take some time to to as both as as people in in the media as people who have you know crossed paths with with Eddie Olchek before um, it'll take some time to kind of decipher you know what what may have happened we may never know and as fans um, of, of of the team and, and 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 of of the broadcast of course over the years uh, it'll take time to get used to changes and it'll take time to accept changes some people may never accept it and and some people may have written off the Blackhawks already if not you know th- this and and while that's extreme i bel- i still understand it um but I, I and as i wrote about in my piece i said you know if you want to not watch the broadcast uh and not wa- for for many reasons one the team may not be <laughs> the team's not going to be very good at least this season um and they're not going to have the broadcasters that that you grew up with or that you wanted to watch I understand it. It's 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 hard. I do want to say, give Chris Vosters a chance because yeah. he's been given a very raw deal um, to not only have to fill the shoes fill the shoes of Pat Foley, but now to have to do it without Eddie Olchek. Um, whoever is in for Olchek, give them a, a, at least a shot. I know people love to rag on Colby and and rag on Kaylee Chelios and 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 whatnot, but they are. They're good at what they do. They don't get to this point in their careers without being good at what they do. Um, having to fill the shoes of Eddie Olchek is, is not going to be easy. Give them at least a fair shake, whoever it is. I know there was a report that the Blackhawks may have been reaching out to former players for interest and availability. Um, unless it's Marion Hosa, I don't know what <laughs> former player is going to come in and is going to immediately be uh, accepted in that role by the fan base. But I, 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 I my point being, I understand the frustration. I'm, I'm there in it as a fan. Um, but as someone who has crossed paths with all these people, it's, it's definitely a, uh, from, from me, give them a, a fair shake because it's, it's not their fault that this situation is, is, is now the reality. I, and, of course, uh, you know, always give, give WGN the, uh, yeah, thank you. the, yeah, the so listen. Instead. The listen, yeah. <laughs> Quality um, radio broadcasts, pre-post intermissions. <laughs> And, uh, and, and the play-by-play is pretty good, too. They got a good group. Yeah, yeah. J- John Weidemann's okay, right? Yeah. No, he's, uh, that's what's cool, too, because when I used to produce, I used to uh, chop up all the sound throughout the league, and I was just like, is John the best? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think John's the best. Yeah. I think John's the best. John's great. Uh, yeah, great. I've seen my wedding. I heard about there that. Yeah. True. That's, again, what kind of guy John is, too. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Um, I mean, that, that alone, dream come true to work with John and Troy. Actually, I, I want to say my favorite uh, Troy Murray, Eddie Olchek story. It was one of the games that Troy came back last year and he forgot his cheaters, his reader's glasses. Oh. And he goes, like, you know, the intro is playing. Boom, 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 boom. United Center is mm-hmm. loud as heck. And uh, he goes, can you run over to TV and ask Eddie if he's got a set of cheaters? I'm like, run over to the t- TV booth while he and Pat Foley are doing the open? Like, I'm not just going to walk in. <laughs> but how do you say no to Troy Murray? Right. right. I'm like, are you serious? So I walk over there. I had Eddie's number. The door is closed. I go, Eddie, I'm outside the door looking for uh, some reader glasses for Troy. And then the door opens. They, like, just finish their open. And I, like, am locking eyes. I'm trying to lock eyes with Eddie. I lock eyes with Pat. And Pat's like, what are you doing here right now? And then finally, like, Eddie locks eyes with me. And, I, and it's so loud. Like, I can't just say, I go, do you have cheaters for Troy? And he's like, Grabs a pair, <laughs> run down, give him, give him to Troy. He puts it on. He puts them on. He goes, 
these are really strong. And then Eddie, Eddie comes down, and I go, they're too strong for him, Eddie. He goes, what do you want, Troy? You want my shoe? Like, you need my jacket? What else do you need? But that, that again. Eddie, can you run down to Walgreens and grab me uh, .5s, please? But, you know, again, just, just kind of the microcosm of those two people, and uh, so cool to, to, to get to know them on a, I, I don't want to say daily basis, but a game-by-game -game basis, or at least a home game-by-game -game basis. Um, I, I want to bring up something you, br you brought up about former players coming in. The thing that people might not understand is uh, Patrick Sharp, Adam Burrish, Andrew Shaw, those guys made a lot more money than some of the analysts around the yeah. Eddie Olchek era. So yeah. a lot of those guys really aren't looking to be, from what I've heard, like a analyst for any team mm -hmm. because it's, it's very time-consuming. You basically have to live in Chicago. Nothing's wrong with that. Right. I, I love Chicago. I've lived here pretty much my whole life. But, right. you know, these, these people have other homes. Um, so, again, that's what leads me to believe there will be more of a rotation like that. I mean, Patrick Sharp is fantastic. I, I really liked uh, Adam Burrish uh, mm -hmm. a few years back when mm -hmm. he was doing some insight. But, it, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if Sharp has the motivation to do 82 games uh, yeah. full time. I know that uh, he might be a little more drawn to a hockey ops opportunity somewhere, maybe here, maybe elsewhere. I don't know. I mean, he had the, na he had the job with NBC for, yeah. for a while right. before... I they, think something like that shop, shoots him well. A couple days a week, you know, where it's not just a full grind of an 82-game season. Yeah. Um, you also There's also, like, the 2010 Hawks factor here. And, and yeah. how much does the current regime want to remove themselves from that and have the constant reminders of it? Like, I, I you know, it is we've, – we've dissected that situation so many times, but that's something to keep in mind, too. Uh, one guy I think is great who's got experience in the role is Stu Grimson. Mm -hmm. um, terrific analyst – Brilliant guy. He came. He came in late last yes. season and did some studio work. Yeah, so I yeah, believe maybe he, he lives in Nashville, so he might need. They might yeah, have to relocate him, but they're in a bit of a jam right now. So he does a lot of NHL that. network. Yeah, yeah he does right a lot of stuff. Too. But yeah. I, I, I think you know network. a permanent role with the Hawks uh, could be enticing to somebody like that. But look, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there uh, as we can. We got a five dollar super chat from Brandon. Super Thank chat, you, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, the only real person who could connect to the fans would be Sandberg alum Kendall Coyne. She's really the only person to connect as a player or fan. I mean, I'd give her an opportunity, but She'd she's be, an active player. Yeah, being an active player kind of takes up your time. Yeah, um, and she's in the player development department too. Yeah, so. she's she. There's only so many hats that she can <laughs> that she can wear at the same time. Right. Um, but yeah, when she has been when she has done broadcasts, um, she's been great. Yeah, I know she's done national stuff. She's done Hawk stuff. Uh, I think she was with the San Jose Sharks for a few games she did. Um, yeah, she's she's been fantastic in that role. I I would say if she didn't have all these other uh, things going on in her life that it would probably make more sense. Like you say, in a rotation, she probably does a, a few games. I, I do think I, I've heard that she she really enjoys the, co the coaching role. Yeah. She, she really wants to try that and make sense. that happen. Yeah. Um, I, I agree, though. I think she was great on the air. And, mm -hmm. you know, bringing up Chris Fosters and Colby Cohen and Kaylee Chelios, I, I worked with basically all of them this past year, and right. all of them have so many strong suits. Uh, Vosters is a, a pretty good buddy of mine. He actually was um, in the minor leagues. We were in the same league. We met like seven years ago. <laughs> um, Down-to-earth dude. And just a, a brainiac, but not like in a, an insulting way yeah, or right. a pretentious way. I mean, yeah, you guys had him on. You we had talk him on the to show, yeah. He's, he's a very smart person. And yeah. he loves, like, history and doing the legwork and doing the hard work. I remember him on here and saying he, over the summer he was going to watch a game from every team, you know, TV and radio. Mm -hmm. Just, like, he loves digging into that work. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do just kind of want to echo on, and not because he's, he's a buddy of mine, but echo on, be easy on him yeah. because he, if, 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 it's, if it's lack of effort, that's not him. It's, if, if it's not, he's not your taste, then okay. Mm -hmm. I can't argue with you, but the dude is, is a very hard worker. Yeah. And he, like you said earlier, Mario, he, he got into the spot for a reason. Anyone yes. new replacing a legend is going to be met right. with hatred. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, for longtime Hawks fans, you'll remember that if Alexei Zhamnov had 200 point seasons, it would not have been enough because he was traded for Ronick. And I get that. Like, Ronick was my favorite player ever, mm -hmm. and this guy was a guy traded, so he would never be fully embraced by Hawks fans. It's just out of the question. Don't look at it that way, yeah. right? Chris worked his ass off to earn that job. There are a bunch of people up for it. Whether or not he was your favorite candidate or not, doesn't matter. He's a guy that has it now. 
just don't hold these decisions against the guys that are in the roles to replace. I, a couple people are, are pointing out that the Hawks just want to save money. Um, we need to destroy that narrative, right? Like Rocky Wirtz has never indicated he's unwilling to spend money. They have always spent up, up to and beyond the cap, right? Which yes. is the point where they've had to Many times move they've dismantled out. a team because they've spent too much yes, money. They're paying players <laughs> that are no longer here just so they can add to the cap that way. Right. Um, the, you look at the way the offseason went. They hire Davidson. They bring in Jeff Greenberg. They bring in Norm McIver. They've got a giant hockey operations staff. All of those people are paid. And to get Jeff Greenberg to move from the Cubs to the Hawks probably wasn't cheap. Right. Right? Like, the money thing, stop. And Eddie has said over and over and over again in the last 24 hours, it's not about money. Eddie would still have been the highest paid broadcaster in the National Hockey League with the deal that was on the table. So it's not about money. Mm -hmm. So dismiss that narrative from your brain because it's not what it's about. I know longtime Hawks fans are programmed to think, you know, dollar bill words, throwing uh, nickels around like manhole covers, whatever you want to say. That's not the reality anymore. The Hawks have spent money like crazy. They've spent it poorly in a lot, lot of respects, but they have spent the money and if you want to spend some money and win some money look at me <laughs> wow. orange knows where i'm about to go, go. the Ching. best way to support chgo like is to download the points bet app and use the code chgo when you sign up do that right now you'll get two risk-free bets up to two grand but with that 50 dollars or more first time deposit you also get a free chgo membership you'll get all of our great web content like mario's piece this morning at allchgo.com and a free t-shirt of your choice from the chgo locker like me and mario you can match the two of us that's two grand in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO locker, all for making a $50 or more first-time deposit at PointsBet. It's your home for live in-play betting, and it just got even better. You see an edge in the game you're watching? Is your favorite team primed for a comeback? Don't just watch the game. Bet along with it live. What are you waiting for? It's time to elevate your live betting game. Download the PointsBet app right now and use that promo code CHGO once the game starts. Don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER for crisis counseling and referral services. And we are also brought to you by Athletic Greens and their AG1 formula, which is designed to improve your gut health, optimize your immune system, and give you more natural energy. In just one scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And if you have different dietary restrictions, uh, whether it's gluten-free, dairy-free, or you uh, follow a keto diet, vegan, whatever it is, with AG1, you're good to go. It's easy to incorporate into your life no matter how busy you may be. It's a small once-a-day habit with big benefits. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop scoop of AG1 in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Blackhawks. That's athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Blackhawks to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Well, I plan on maybe doing some other stuff here today, but it feels like we should probably just stick with this because yeah. it's on everybody's to... mind. And, and again, we're just trying to keep up with the comments. Um, yes, very active chat today. We appreciate yeah. you guys uh, watching and um, joining in on the discussion. Really appreciate it. Uh, I do want to go back to uh, something you said, Jay, about um, the, the Blackhawks kind of keeping – keeping 2010 in, in, the, in the mirror. And I don't want to tinfoil hat this and say that the Blackhawks maybe didn't push as hard because they are trying to go young, uh, both on and off the ice, it appears, uh, and maybe are trying to ch uh, make changes from the one goal era of the, of the team, from the 2010 vibes, um, and not fighting to get Eddie Olchek to stay um, may have been a way to make another change. I don't believe that that's the case, but I can't 
sit here and think that bit by bit things have changed that off of the ice a lot of things that had that one goal era and, and vibes to them uh, are, are, are changing. Pat Foley, uh, now Eddie Olchek, um, obviously coaching changes, managerial changes, uh, on ice changes. They're, they're all being made. And obviously with, with time going on, not every player can continue to play. But we see Brian Campbell in a managerial role. Um, and we see these changes. I, I, I just, to me, it's, it's, it's a little hard to kind of decipher, are these moves being made with the thought of what's best for the organization? Or are they being made with some frame of, we need to continue to push away from this, this story and this, and this. It's a, it's a, it's a good question. This and environment. I, and, and I wonder if it's more, Look, like when Jamie Faulkner was hired, a lot of people liked it because it was someone from outside of hockey and outside of the organization to look at the thing with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that's a good thing sometimes. But I do think we've seen a little bit of maybe an obsession with doing everything young. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's a little bit too aggressive to swing everything. Like, look, we're not going to watch games on TikTok. It's not happening. <laughs> right. Yes, of course, there's value. Hey, hey, speak for yourself. I mean, <laughs> come on. The, like, there is value, of course, to appealing to a younger fan base. But I was in uh, Chiefs Twitter spaces yesterday after the show, mm -hmm. and we're hearing from 19, 20-year-olds saying, I love Eddie Olchek. He's the reason I watch games. I grew up with that voice. These older voices have value, be it in your broadcast booth, be it in the on the team, be it around you know the front office, whatever. Like, Go ask Kyle Davidson who's the most valuable person in that room, and he's going to say Norm McIver. Norm McIver's been around. Mm -hmm. That matters. And, yeah, you don't want to fill your front office with our new hockey operations staff is Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, and Jeremy Roenick. They know what it means to be a Blackhawk. No, that's dumb. Right. That's just stupid, and it sets you up for failure. But you can't just push everything from the old days away, whether or not it's related to 2010 or they just want a whole younger, youthful appeal – to lose Eddie Olchek in any way is short-sighted. And, you know, some of the things I heard about how the, 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 the GM search went, people at the top of the organization were very, very comfortable in naming Jeff Greenberg the GM. And it took someone at the very top to say, no, we're not doing that. Kyle Davidson's the guy, right? So keep these things in mind. Like, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts here. And there's things we can say, and there's things we can kind of hint at, and there's things, we, you know what right, I mean? Right. But, like, there, there's, there might be, from a, from a business side, a little bit too much of a focus on young, 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 young. You can gain fans with an older broadcast or older management pieces. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what grows fans? You know what gets people watching? Winning win on the ice and that's why i don't have a problem with the way the things are going on the ice the hockey ops the the hockey part of it to me is sound and i know as a fan it's hard to look at like you said joe to bring it and hagel and olchek and beach is is separate occurrences but they are they're all separate and you can't look at it on the whole and i know it really sucks to take hit after hit after hit as a fan and gut punch after gut punch but you've got to separate the hockey from the business, and I don't know what I'm trying to say. I know I'm rambling here, but it's just I, all I'm trying to say is try to like compartmentalize everything mm -hmm. and look at everything in a in a on its own kind of like d does this trade advance the rebuild? Yes or no? Does the signing advance the rebuild? Yes or no? Eddie Olchek in the booth has nothing to do with the rebuild, right? It just doesn't. They're right. two separate things. But I know as a fan. It just it is a it's pain after pain after pain, and that's what makes off seasons like this so tough to endure. Well, it's like the draft, right? I mean, when the DeBrinket trade details had come out, everyone was very upset, and and criticism of that trade is is still valid. Yes, but wait until the entire draft is over. Wait until everything has happened on that day, and a lot of people, I feel like yourself included, was 
Okay, overall the day, good step yeah. forward for the Blackhawks. Um, so that's why it's it, it can be difficult for people to separate these things. In terms of bringing in new and, and shooing out old, I, I just feel like it it's just like a team, right? You need that mix. You need that sure. good mix. You need that experience. You need the veterans. But you need the fresh ideas. You need right. the young people in to just breathe in a, a breath of fresh air in terms of keeping an open mind with everything. Um, having Eddie Olchek and John Weideman on TikTok – like having <laughs> them on TikTok doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but or Foley, but the yeah. Blackhawks putting Eddie Olchek and John Weideman or whoever on TikTok that does make sense to me. Right? Like, hey, here's what's going on in the radio booth. Here's John Weideman. He's seen a lot over mm-hmm. the past 16, 17 years. Like, l- listen to what he's got to say. Listen to these stories. Yeah. I mean, have what you, say what you want on TikTok. There's a lot of useless stuff out there, but there is a lot of useful stuff out oh, there. Oh, absolutely. So, so teach the young fans about some of these guys that have made this organization great. And I, the, the other thing, when you bring up um, the team, the committee they had for looking for the general manager, that's one common theme I'm seeing from the Hawks lately is – they're not, I should say, they're bringing in a lot of people to make decisions. It feels like it's, it is a big group being heard. Now, whether or not the final decision is made by just that, the information is being absorbed. A lot of focus groups, a lot of research and things like that. I don't know what they're swaying more towards when they make those decisions, but they're not making decisions lightly. And I don't think it's just a brash, no, this is old, this is this sure, has sure, rem- sure, rumblings sure. of 2010, let's move on. It is pros and cons, okay, this might suck, but we're going to go in this direction. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and at that point, what, what can you do but stick to your guns? And I, right. I think people can relate to that aspect, even though they're probably not happy about what had happened. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that, one, we're seeing in the chat, and two, that we can kind of... Uh, spin as a positive is uh, addressing your shirt here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw I Katrina a made a chat big from uh, Thank Katrina. You. Thank you for, for, for that. It says nice shirt choice. Uh, hashtag TM19, Team Murray. Um, yeah, it, it appears Troy Murray is going to be uh, a regular in the radio booth uh, this upcoming season, and I think that's pretty good news, right? It's Listen, I've seen him twice this summer, once at the Luke Richardson press conference and once at development camp, and he looked great. Um, he's been going through this battle for over the past year now. Last year, it was basically Troy, come when you can come. Yeah. And sometimes he surprised us. I mean, that that was the coolest thing in the world. One time, he <laughs> he popped on a headset right after a goal, and all of a sudden we hear, "Oh, were you surprised about that goal?" And everyone's like, <laughs> "Did a fan just get the mic?" No, that sounded like Troy though, and he's he's in the booth. He popped oh, in nice, the booth. Nice, nice. And then you know he, he caught a burst of energy towards the end of the year, and he was there almost every home game mm-hmm. towards the end um it was really cool and you could tell you could sense that him being back at the united center was just such an uplift for him such a resurgence of energy and positivity yeah. and it was just so cool to be a fly on the wall of that um because the battle that he's been enduring has been really really tough and uh with what he's looked this past summer and from what i've been hearing news is better mm-hmm. you know you're you're battling cancer news is never good but news it's, has it's, been better yeah so as far as i know from what i've been seeing we're going to be hearing and seeing a lot more of troy murray next year i mean he's got tv experience too so yeah i, I I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he popped in a couple of color commentator roles this season so that's a win for hawks fans to see him let alone hear him um, yeah, just I mean, we could talk all our yeah. fantastic things about Troy Murray. He's, uh, he's what a dude. Troy yeah. was one of my very first favorite Blackhawks, and I got to know him a little bit when I was producing the games when they were on the score. And he's always been just so generous with his time and everything. And uh, when you heard Eddie's interview on ESPN yesterday, when he mentioned Troy, yeah, is mm-hmm. when Eddie like really got choked up, and and their relationship, as you just outlined really well, Joe, with the yeah. with the reader story. That that's that's a tight thing, and it's it's funny. It's almost like maybe that was the first time that Eddie had realized that he wasn't going to see Troy ever again. Like when he was doing that interview, because yeah. you could tell like something struck him in that moment. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and and both of them having gone through Cor- yeah, yeah. Uh, that connection health, health health battles, and um, that is something that you know to 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 know that Troy was there for Eddie, and Eddie's been there for Troy. It's it's 
one of those connections that you it's it's just not easy to replicate um and yeah in in that interview you can um you can hear it how much it 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 affected him i remember when uh i think it was nick's first game that he filled in so he was on radio and eddie was on tv and then they recapped it on nhl network the following day (laughs) and you know eddie's all smiles big grin and then he's like hey nick got to fill in because unfortunately Troy Murray's in a battle right now. And then it just hit him. I mean, yeah. it just rush of emotions, yeah. couldn't keep it together. I mean, you, you see the bond right then and there. You don't need to know much else. Another quick story that I heard, um, when Eddie was a rookie and, and playing with Troy, there was some instance where Troy called him up. He's like, hey, you know, you want to come over? I got a few of the guys coming by. And Eddie's like, yeah, you know, I got to you know, get in with the group and sure. get in with the team and be a team player. So he goes over there. No one else is there. He's like, yeah, I need help moving this motorcycle onto a truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like, all right, that's the last time I'm going to help out Troy Murray, but I'm going to help Troy Murray. That's, that's great. great. That's, that's, great. Uh, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that he's going to, uh, by all by all accounts, be back for the vast majority of the season next year. Because like you said, that was, it still is, a huge battle for Troy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 very, uh, look, I'm, any any battle with cancer is scary, but... Uh, he was up against it, and to see him uh, at least status quo or improving is is terrific news. Um, comment from Andy, I think when you get hit with so much heartbreaking news, even from different aspects and departments, it all just blurs together and becomes hard to separate. That's totally true. That's true. That's true. And, and, you know, like Mario and I yesterday before the show, we were talking about the, the Hockey Canada investigation, just like yeah. here's another thing that could come up and be another – you know, uh, with Taylor Radish and Boris Kachuk on that roster, again, want to be totally clear, there's no indication whether or not either of those guys was involved in that, but they were on that team, and it's another potential negative Blackhawk story coming out, and then the Eddie thing comes out an hour after we had that conversation, and it's like, my God, can we just talk about Caleb Jones and Philip Kurashev's <laughs> RFA contracts? Right. I like, I just want to get back yeah. to hockey, and the Hawks have done they're really bad at letting that happen. Mm-hmm. And it's very frustrating. And I know that as fans, it's frustrating too. And look, like yesterday when we got the news, we were pissed. We were real pissed. Yep. Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, how, does, how can this happen? And I still find myself in that position where whatever the hang-up was, you don't let Eddie leave that building. You don't. Even if you say, look, we're at a crossroads, but please, it is July 18th. Can we just hit pause here? We'll, we're going to get together. You get together. We're going to figure this thing out. Please, please, please do not accept a job somewhere else. We need you. We want you. It's like, you know, if, you, if your wife comes to you and she's like, I'm leaving you. You're like, all right. You know what I mean? Like, no, <laughs> go to marriage counseling, go to broadcast counseling and figure this goddamn thing out that's because like, you need Eddie Olchek. And that's like, oh, my God. When, when I was on the, the chat with uh, with Chief yesterday, it was like the Hawks need to hire someone to be the vice president of what the hell are we even doing here? Mm-hmm. Like someone to be in the room and just observe conversations and be like, wait. We're not really talking about letting Eddie Olchek go here, are we? Right. We're not really considering that, are we? This is not something we're really doing to kind of like, oh, yeah, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, VP, of what the hell are we doing here. Thank you for calling our attention to the stupid decision we're about to make. <laughs> Who is that person? I'm available. I'll do it. Yeah, it's, right. It's, it's just because there's so many things that they do, and you're just like, What? What the hell? Mm-hmm. What the hell are you doing? Even like as the Kyle Beach stuff was coming out, all of you said nothing? How is this possible? Mm-hmm. What the hell? It's the <laughs> video coach. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. There's so many things with the Hawks like that. And maybe it's just because I'm closer to them than any team and I care about them more than any team. But my God, it feels like it happens with them more than any other organization in sports. It's so frustrating. Yeah, it's been a it's been a challenging run uh as as a fan and as someone who cares about the team to continue to put yourself out there as like, okay, like I think things are are going in the right direction and then, you know, there's there's a, a something else that 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 will come up and cause a roadblock. And and I think with 
with this whole situation, you know, it, we knew that Olchek uh, co- was in the final year of his of his contract this season uh, with uh, being part of the broadcast. And I, to be honest, I had completely out of my mind forgotten, like, oh, yeah, like I hadn't heard about him being brought back or anything. I would have thought that by the end of last season, it would have been like, okay, hey, we know Pat's leaving, but Eddie's sticking around for another four or five years, whatever it, uh, whatever it could have been. Um, so when the, when the news had come out, I was just like, oh, yeah, like his contract had expired. And it just, to me, it was just like, how do you let that get, how do you even get to that point? Like you would have, uh, to me, it would have made sense that that would have, a new contract, a new extension would have been met between the two sides before the current one had even expired. And to get to that point uh, and to get to the point where for whatever reason they couldn't come to an, an agreeable, uh, uh, you know, meeting point, I, I just, it's still hard to just fathom how, how it got to that point. And yeah, to, to what you're saying, Jay, it's just, it's, it just seems like there needs to there's a disconnect between what is the what is the right move to to kind of keep everything together and and I, I know compartmentalizing things it's it, it's a it's a challenge but it just seems like there's a lot of pieces of the Blackhawks kind of going out and we're all just kind of hoping that something comes together and brings it all back in that might be in a few years, it might not really happen <laughs> very quickly. So um, it's 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 a hard uh, it's a hard path to navigate. That's 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 definitely f- yeah certain for me at least. I'm really intrigued by broadcast therapy. I think you'd be a great <laughs> broadcast yeah. therapist, Jay. Um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like everything we've been saying is yeah. is again I. I these decisions aren't made lightly and by either side. Right. But the fact that it got to even the point of this might not happen makes it makes you wonder what was going on until it became even just a possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, what what is one side asking that the other side feels unfair? And it's it's t- like it's we, we can speculate, we can read all the reports right. and everything. And it, it's just, it's, it's frustrating on, on all accounts and more, more importantly, the fans. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I don't think this, I don't think the Hawks are looking at this as, well, we're moving, we're turning the page, we're moving forward. They see this as a loss. I, I truly think that. Yeah. You know, I'm reminded, uh, someone in the chat brought it up. There was like a lot of vagueness around John Weideman last year. If you remember that. Yeah, there was a like, oh, you know, we've got, I think it was Jamie Fogg. I know for, I know it was Jamie Fogg. I don't have the direct quote, but something like, oh, you know, we've got we've got plans for him, and it, it didn't sound like a full commitment to him. I know people from the Blackhawks listen to this podcast every day. Please relay the message that losing John Weideman on the radio call would be a massive, massive mistake, and you've already. Well, whoever you want to blame for it have alienated a large portion of your fan base with what happened with Eddie Olchek. And doing the same with John Weideman would be a catastrophic move. And let me tell you something. Joe, I think you know this. I worked in radio. Not a lot of young folks listening to radio these days. And I know you're trying to get them to. I understand that. But John Weideman on the call is not pushing youngsters away from the broadcast. That's not what it is, okay? You need to keep John and Troy together as long as you can. Hawks fans, I'm 44. I want a connection to the days I grew up watching hockey. I'm not old. I'm not some 65-year-old guy yelling at kids to get off my lawn. I'm not old. I'm at the end of the key demographic, but, like, Troy Murray is a beloved figure for me. John Weideman is the voice of the dynasty. These things have value, Mm -hmm. And you might just want to move on and bring the, the young guns in and have this cool hip broadcast. Keep the pros there. You need a connection to the past. The past matters. And I'm not saying, like I said earlier, you don't just hire a bunch of Blackhawks legends to come in and run the team. That's a foolish move. We all agree with that. But you can't just eliminate 
anyone over 40, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Because you want to be young and hip and, and forward thinking. You can do that. Troy is forward thinking. John is forward thinking. You know, Troy's out there saying, in my day, we would punch someone in the face for doing that. No, Troy's talking about the game as it is now. Mm -hmm. He So same with Eddie O, right? Like, it is not an old-sounding broadcast. So it, just get this message to the people at the top. Do not eliminate John Wideman and or Troy Murray. It would be a massive mistake, unless it's for Joe Brand, because he's great. <laughs> well, we have we have someone in, in, in the chat there, Chris, saying, I'm 32, and I agree with Jay. Uh, I will also say I'm 32, and I agree with Jay. I grew up with Pat Foley, Eddie Olchek, John Wideman, Troy Murray being the broadcast voices of the Blackhawks, and that's when I was 14, 15 years old, and I wasn't listening to those games, watching those games, thinking, these guys are old. They don't know how to connect with the young people. No, like, you have the appreciation for how they are both professionally and in broadcasting the game. Uh, I, in, you know, Foley and, and Olchek and uh, John and, and, and Troy, two of the best local calls on radio and television across the league, and I would put that up against most uh, local broadcasts across any sport. And you appreciate that as a fan. You don't have to be in your 50s, 60s, 40s, whatever, to appreciate that. You can be a, like I was as a teenager uh, in, in, in my 20s and, and appreciate that because you understand how good they are, what sets them apart from other, from other broadcasters, and what they mean to the team and the fan base. Um, I never saw Stan Makita play. I never knew Stan Makita uh, in in his days, I never knew, I never watched or saw or met Tony Esposito in their days, but I appreciated their legacy, and I want to learn about it I, I, exactly. And and how many people have connections to legacies of 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 players and of teams because of their parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles, whatever it is, and you appreciate that connection. And you know, my dad watched. Stan Makita and Tony Esposito and, and that era of hockey for the Blackhawks. And I, when I grew up as a fan, I connected to that. And so those players I connected to through that connection of, of, of being a fan, and it made you appreciate it. And when those players passed away in recent years, even though I, I'd never you know, met them I had never seen them play, didn't know them as, as, as people and as characters, uh, as, as hockey players. I was still sad because it's, it's a part of the legacy of the team that we connect with that is, uh, that is being affected. So in that realm, losing a Pat Foley, losing Eddie Olchek, and, and losing those connections, it makes an impact. Just because someone is young or, think, or thinking of like, you know, being in a different generation doesn't mean that they can't have that connection. Just because you're trying to connect with, like you said, Jay, just because you're trying to connect with 20-year-olds, a, a younger generation of fans, doesn't mean they only would understand someone who is in their generation. You can understand That's people right. of different right. generations <laughs> and appreciate what what they bring to the table. I think that that's, that's one thing that I, I would hope, to echo your point, that the Blackhawks can keep in mind like we, like what you know what? I, I i know i've we've we've met and talked to chris and colby and, and got to know them a little bit no disrespect to them i think they're great at what they do but we don't necessarily need to have two 30 year olds to connect to a younger uh fan base that that might be the case that with the broadcast moving forward i i, I don't know exactly the, the plans but it it didn't have to be that way it didn't have to be everything's new, everything's young. It could have still been Eddie Olchek is around, and Eddie Olchek is bringing this fan base forward. What 20-year-old is tuning into a broadcast and being like, oh, I'm not listening to this. These dudes sound old. <laughs> Get bent. <laughs> like, it's it, like the 20-year-old like hey. Dodger fan, you know, 10 years ago that turned on Vince Scully, like, ugh, this is clearly an old person, and I will not listen <laughs> What are we doing here? Like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't, you don't have to go in there and prove to everybody how smart you are and how, look at me, I'm forward thinking and I'm going to bring in this new, these new people and these new ways of doing things. 
fine. That's great sometimes, and it's great in doses, but to go try to be the smartest person in the room, which is what he who shall not be named was doing for years, you don't always, sometimes the best thing to do is the obvious thing to do, right? It's right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. Make Eddie Olchek, how nice would that press release have been yesterday? Eddie Olchek agrees to a five-year extension with the Blackhawks. We would have done an hour show on it yesterday, an hour show on it today, and say, this is great news. You know, things are looking up. We needed a win. Here's you need a win. It right. Like, oh, you know, they, they did decently in the draft. The free agency makes sense. Now Eddie O's back. All right, things are starting to feel better. Mm-hmm. Instead, here we are again, right back to the way we felt when that Alex Debrinka trade was made. Like, ugh, what's next? What is the next, you know, cut in my arm that's going to... That's gonna upset. That's leg. gonna. Ups- I'm like, yeah. Look at the <laughs> gash on my leg. How many more of those can I tolerate? Right. And right. I, I get why Hawks fans are so pissed. So to the people at the top, I hope you're listening. And look, I know it wasn't your intention to like screw Eddie Olchek, get out of here. That's right. not how it was. But you've gotta just don't overthink things. When you've got something great in front of you, accept it and embrace it and keep it around. Listen, you're preaching to the choir in terms of the significance of broadcasts and broadcasters. I mean, the whole reason I, I'm in this business is because I loved listening to Pat Hughes and John mm-hmm. Rooney growing right. up. Um, in college, I went to Illinois State. We got a brand new workout facility, and watching the Hawks was appointment television. But I would go and listen to the game on the WGN radio app because it was free, it was available. And my buddies like, oh, what do you listen to? I'm like, Hawks game. He's like, what? You <laughs> psycho on a treadmill? Um, it, there's just that connection that has to be had. The coolest, the coolest compliment I got this past year, I got a, a buddy who's a teacher out in Oak Forest. And he's got a kid, a student. They can't afford cable. They cannot watch TV. He listens to the Hawks games on the radio. And when he, like, my friend told his student, oh, yeah, I know – Joe Brand, who does pre and post, he like thought that, and believe me, I was like, tell him, tell the kid right now to lower his standards and his expectations. (laughs) Um, But, but there's that connection and there's that accessibility and that freedom. And then just that, that um, loyalty that, you know, you pop on the radio, you're going to get the game. Mm -hmm. Um, That's not shortchanged. And again, like I understand trying to relate to a younger fan base. That's how you grow your product, right? you got to reach out to the younger people. Um, I, I don't see why John Wideman should have a TikTok, but I understand why the Blackhawks put John <laughs> Wideman on TikTok. Here's a peek right. in the radio booth. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah, That's I think, interesting. I think, I think there's an avenue that, that is to be had there. Mm-hmm. And just to pump John and Troy's tires even more, I mean, they are – Pat Hughes, Ron Sano-esque, yep. you know, or yeah. even Pat and Ron Coomer now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's really cool because with all the rotation we've had, I love working with Nick Olchek, Colby Cohen, Kaylee Chelios, Paul Capanigri, Colin Frazier was great to deal with. But when Troy came back, it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. I forgot how cool and special and significant this was. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> all right, we got one more super chat we got to get to before we wrap up the show. We are running a little bit late. This was a good uh, session of, uh, for, of uh, broadcast therapy, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon, with a $2 Super Chat, says he's 21, and Edzo and Pat connected uh, me at ages 7 through 10. Yeah, that's... Is he related to Dylan? Oh, that's no, how spelled it is. differently. No, <laughs> no not, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, and then there's one at the bottom I want to address, too, uh, from Jim Von Velt, John Felt. He says, Hawks management prepping us for when they get rid of Kane and Taves. That's next. No. This is not related to... Right. To the hockey stuff. It is not compartmentalized. Kane and Taves, if they're gone, will be gone for hockey reasons. Eddie Olchek and Kane and Taves have nothing to do with it. If anything, they would keep Eddie Olchek to have a fluffer. Buffer? Fluffer is a different thing. A buffer <laughs> for if they let Kane and Taves go. They're not just going to keep bombarding you with bad news on purpose. Yes, they're doing it on accident right now, but they're not going to do it on purpose. Separate. Not the same thing. Eddie O and Kane and Taves have nothing to do with each other, except for they're all wonderful, and they all did great things for this franchise, and uh, it's a shame that this seems to be the year when all of them will be gone. All right, before we wrap up, I want to remind everybody one last time, the best way to help CHGO continue to grow is to download that points bet app and use the code CHGO when you do. Not only will you get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but you'll also get, uh, with a $50 or more first-time deposit, 
<laughs> that's CHGO membership. Thank you for pointing. Joe's got the point down. <laughs> Download the app. Use the code CHGO. Make that $50 first time deposit. You get the free membership, which gets you all of our great web content, our Discord channel, which gets you priority on Mailbag Monday. And you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. And in case you missed it, online sign-up is available now in Illinois. Download the app right now from your couch, from your shower, in your underwear, whatever you want to do from start to finish on your phone Use the code CHGO. What are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. We want to thank Joe Brand for joining us on a very newsy and strange day. We appreciate it. Catch his work on WGN, Kane County Cougars, all that great stuff. And he's a Southside guy, so we know he's good. We know he's a quality human being, even though he went to Marist and not St. Lawrence, oh, okay, which okay. we'll just there let it slide. Is. That's okay. <laughs> you, you can't get them all right, man. You can't be per- – no, he's perfect. Oh, but he's nerfect. I saw that on a sign at the church by my house the other day. Uh, tomorrow, Greg Boyson is back in all of his Roosevelt's glory, so we'll have his reaction to all this Hawks news, and I cannot wait. I, I texted Greg last night, you got to come home. <laughs> you got to come home for tomorrow's show because I cannot wait to hear. Uh, I can't not wait to hear his take on it. You all will this be stuff. opinionated for yep. sure. So we'll talk to you Wednesday at 11 here on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.